committee and public meeting uh, for Wednesday, February 2nd at 5 p.m. Um, like to call the meeting to order. Um, first off, is there any public comments for tonight? No, we didn't receive any this week. Okay, then um, I'd like to move on um, to the minutes from last week's meeting. Um, anybody have any comments or things on the meeting on the minutes, or do we have a motion to approve them? So moved. Second. Okay. okay. So last week's minutes have been approved. So um, we can move on to the discussion of the fire department meets, which is the first item of the agenda. Uh, are you there? Yeah. All right. Um, just so I, I don't. I can't see who's on the meeting, but it's Rich Bailey, chief of the fire department. Um, CIP request this year is going to be for SCBAs and bottles. Uh, it's going to be in the number of 618,000. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. <clears throat> I mean, that's going to replace uh, 78 packs and bottles. Uh, we, I was given a week's extension because uh, our our user right now or the packs we have are made by Scott and they came in with an astronomical number. Um, so we've shopped a little bit. Uh, I'm here tonight for the, to ask for the money. I'm still unsure which way we're going to go as far as Scott or MSA. Um, I need a bigger sample size. You know, it was just, it was too crazy of a week with the snowstorm and trying to get uh, our firefighters tested to be able to use these packs and to really get them used. But uh, the 618 right now is the number that I'll be looking for. Obviously, if we get the grant or we go with a different vendor and it's lower, the money would be returned. Okay, uh, when would you expect to hear about the grant? You know, probably not till May. You know, it's a it's a federal grant, and that's when May or June, actually. So, Rich, this is the Firefighters Prevention Act grant, the, the uh, federal grant that provides um, Scott Packs. Uh, I believe so. Yes, I I have the title of it here. Uh, that's the FEMA Assistant to Firefighters Grant. Yeah. When's the last time the town applied for and, and was funded through that grant? It's, uh, I it's say fortunate, Rick. About 15 years ago, and we got it. We got the grant. Uh, we applied for it last year and did not get it. And we have reapplied this year and are waiting here for an answer. For an answer. And uh, Bonnie, um, uh, are we talking about using uh, state funds for ARPA. this? Yep, ARPA state funds. Okay. So one of the things you could do, uh, if you so choose, is to recommend to allocate the money, but it could sit in a pocket somewhere. Uh, and then council, again, doesn't have to allocate money until 24. So if it ends up the grant came through, then that money could be loosened up for other projects on the priority list. You know what I'm saying? Because Rich, when, when uh, are these gonna expire? This year, you know, this, we have to have a plan in place to replace this year. So I would start looking middle end of the year our purchase. I had a couple questions for you, Rich. Tom Mazzarella. <clears throat> so you just said 78 bottles. Your write-up says 68. Is, is it the, just the typo or? Oh, that's me. Got 68, not 78. 68 units. And, and you're talking about purchasing two cylinders when you're only using one at a time, correct? A cylinder and a spare. So going back to the existing cylinders, they're 
Um, they're not interchangeable with the new packs. Is that? That is true? correct. Okay. Correct. So uh, I was not clear about the 15 year requirement to replace them. Are, are the units life limited? Are the tanks life limited? Are, is it both? Can you explain how that works? Uh, the, the, the packs are, and it's, they're, not, they're not backed up by the provider anymore and 15 years is the max. The bottles we've been replacing, Scott bottles. Okay. Because those were up on their 15 year as well. But you couldn't use the Scott bottles if you bought new Scott packs, is that true? Missed the first part of that time. What? Is there any way we can use bottles on the new packs? If we stay with Scott, yes. Okay. And are all those bottles the same age and do they all expire at the same time? Uh, not all the bottles we have, no. No, because we've bought bottles through the last three years to separate that age group. We received this grant, like I was saying a couple minutes ago, about 15 years ago. Right. So everything do it once. So my questions, the reason I'm asking the questions, with something like this, in my opinion, it would be better to space out the purchase so that, you know, if they have a life expectancy of five years or 15 years, rather, that 15 years from now, another council, another town group of uh, <clears throat> individuals is in task with coming up with this huge amount of money to replace all 68 uh, Scott air packs or air packs. I mean, there's now no, there's no way to do that right now, right? I mean, they're all going to drop dead at the end of the year. Moving forward, yes, correct. Okay. Hmm. And so these these new uh, SCBA, the, the new SCBAs that are um, uh, approved, let's say, is that going to be a 15 year life, or is that just depends on when the uh, fire department regulations, the NFPA regulations change. We, are we guaranteed 15 years out of these? These, the one of our vendors that we're looking into does provide a 15 year warranty, yes, and one does not. So I guess the, the answer to your question is yes, in 15 years, if there wasn't a replacement program for say three or four years, then yes. That is correct, that it would be another, you know, I'll say 68, but if there's more members, less members, you know, depend on the, the size of the department in 15 years. And then the last question, how do we come up with the 68? I understand you're gonna have some of them that have thermal imaging capabilities, where the, I think you said the chiefs all have those in their vehicles. Uh, would be the officers on all the apparatus. Okay, and then the rest of them, there's what, 10 per truck? Is that what you're doing, something like that? I, something similar to that. It's not 10 per truck, you know, it's you know six for one truck, eight for another truck, you know, it's, it's varying numbers, but yes. And it does include staff packs for chiefs. Well, and then, so, um, you would carry the extra bottles on the trucks too? Yes, we have slots built into the trucks for that. Okay. And then lastly, how many members are in the department right now? Uh, now to get me up by that, how many are in the department that go into a fire with an air pack? All our interior qualified. I could get you that number. I don't, I don't have the interior number off the top of my head. It's like, would you say it's likely below 68? Yeah, I'd say probably about 60. But we, that's still, not we still feel we need 68. That's where I'm going with this. Yes. Okay. That's it. Thanks.
Okay, does anybody have, have any other questions right now? Okay, Rich, if you got nothing else, um, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. It. Thanks, Rich. Okay, our next item would be um, to start the discussion on the uh, ranking of the projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, if I can interrupt for a second. So uh, I had sent everyone a, uh, a file with the blue text that showed it was titled new ARPA projects at the top, which are those projects that are on our list now or on your list for prioritizing that you have not had presentations or discussions on. Okay. So we, you know, we've asked the, the appropriate department heads to come tonight so they could you know, we can go through these with you and talk about them. Okay. Um, so if, if you want to start with that, we could just go through that list, have everybody state, you know, talk about their project uh, like we normally would do, and then have them available for questions for the, these projects and, and the overall list if, if we have, if you guys have any. Um, sure, that'd be great. I just, um, I got home late, so I'm just getting a lot of this stuff opened up now. I got the list in front of me now. So, okay. Uh, yeah, if we can do that. That'd be great. All right. So let me, uh, my, my two are at the top, so I'll, I'll get started with it. Um, the first one you'll see there is miscellaneous drainage improvements with ARPA in parentheses. So this is similar to what I presented to you last week. I had put in a CIP request for $50,000 to have funds available um, for smaller drainage projects that, that we have a need for, but don't really reach the level of CIP funding. Um, so with this, it was also a $200,000 request in, in ARPA. So as noted in column M, you know, the project description, I'm just saying we're rolling that 50,000 into this. So in the last spreadsheet I had sent you, I crossed out the $50,000 CIP request and all of that is now in this $200,000 ARPA request. So it's the okay. same project for the same type of work. Okay. So, okay. The second project. Uh, for old Weathersfield parking, um, I understand was very vague because um, you guys hadn't really heard much about it. Um, and I know that it, it ranked pretty low for everyone because you probably don't know much about the project. So I'm just going to take a couple minutes and show you um, the plan that we currently have on it so you can get a sense of what the project is. Um, it's something we've been working on for a little while now. Can everyone see my screen? Okay, um, so what we're looking at here to orient you, this is Center Street at this, at this end of the page. Um, going left to right is Main Street. Right here in the center is Firehouse One. Over here to the right is Webb Dean, uh, Webb Dean Stevens Museum. So we have last few months been working on a project to build some additional parking in this area of Old Weathersfield. Um, we've identified through some studies that there is a need for additional parking, um, both for both for safety and to accommodate you know, a lot of the events that the town has. So what you're looking at is, is the latest iteration of that plan. And, and just briefly, uh, you know, understand this is just a conceptual plan at this point to sketch. Um, we are setting up meetings with some of the property owners that are affected to have some conversations about it. So I suspect it will change, um, but as it is right now, um, what we're looking to do is um, provide parking basically behind the fire fire department. Right now, the public parking is in the back lot of the firehouse between the fire station and the community gardens that are up here. So with this iteration of the plan, we're, we're looking to segregate uh, firehouse into this area. So they have their own access in and out. Um, emergency traffic uh, coming in and out is separated from public vehicles uh, that, are, that are using the lot. Um, so that was one of the things that was suggested um, during our last round of revisions. So with this plan, we were, we were looking at potentially a two-way entrance coming in off of Center Street here, just to the north of the Charles restaurant, um, tying that driveway into the existing parking lot right now that the Charles has. Um, then the lot would come up around to the west here behind the, one, the new house that was built on Center Street. And we have some aisles and rows of parking back here. 
And then that would continue around to another two-way driveway that we're considering um, just to the north of Old Town Cafe. Right now, that's a very narrow driveway. It is two-way, but it's, it's not wide enough for two vehicles. Um, so that's something we want to we want to explore further. Um, this the museum has some historical, some archaeological significant land in this area, and we're going to meet with them and talk a little bit about what, you know what their thoughts and concerns are. But right now, this is the plan. Um, what happened last year, maybe it's been a year and a half now, is um, we had a request from Representative uh, Amy Morimbello, um, who asked for uh, the plan. It went to the state. We were awarded $500,000 in grant funding. Um, that amount is about half of what we feel we need to do the whole project. Um, it was estimated at about $1.1 million. So we do have half of it. Um, you know, one option might be to try and phase the project. Um, although we are looking with the ARPA request for 600,000 is basically to, to fill that gap between the 500,000 we have and the 1.1 million we feel we need to do the project. Um, so that's where that request came from. Um, this is something, like I said, it's just at a very conceptual stage. Now there'll be, if we, as we move forward, there'll be public meetings and public input, but this is where we are right now. And just to give you a description of what that, what that project was for. So. This is something the town is looking to move forward with in some manner. Um, like I said, it may change a little bit once we have meetings with the abutters, but and the affected owners. Um, but at this point, this is what we have, and we're we're hoping to build something similar to try and get parking off of Main Street and get parking off of Center Street that has been problematic. Um, this will be right across the street from the Keeney Center, <clears throat> which is down here. <clears throat> it would require we were looking at maybe a realignment of the driveway for the public parking that's in the back. Um, this crosswalk here is where I have the demonstration crosswalk. If you've been down there in the last couple of months, we have some cones set up and we're using it and trying to evaluate how it's working, which it seems to be functioning well. So we may need to do some improvements with the Keeney Center as well. Um, you know, With this, we're looking at some, uh, land, uh, some lighting, uh, landscaping, trees, um, some drainage improvements. Um, we are Designated, like I said, this lies just for fire department, so we'll have to figure out how to sign sign that and prevent people from coming in and out through there. Um, the plan does reserve this corner of the parking lot for Webb Dean Stevens Museum staff um, with a small connection to uh, the, the gravel driveway that they have here. Um, we've also put in uh, some parking pretty close to them with a connection to the new building addition. And this particular plan um, shows some potential uh, outdoor seating area uh, with uh, you know maybe block paper pavers or something back here behind Old Town. There's some, been some different alternatives back here, but this is the one we're, we're currently at. Um, and the only other you know big thing I wanted to point out was if you've been out to the Charles, you've, you've seen the very long um, <laughs> access ramp that they have here. So we'd have to modify that and do some switchbacks on it to be able to open up this driveway and make the connection for improving traffic circulation through the site. So that's just an overview of what that project is. If anyone has questions, I'd be happy to answer them. How many spaces did you set? Yeah, that's a good question. <clears throat> so up here, we looked at what we have for exi existing spaces from the Charles um, up to Old Town Cafe uh, property. We have about 56 right now. Not all of them are striped. Some of those are informal spaces, but that's what we estimate vehicles can park. Um, with this layout, we would end up with 128 total. 109 would be in the public lot, 19 in the fire department with this layout. And this is all public property. Uh, you've mentioned the Charles. Are, are we working with property owners who uh, own some of this land? Yeah, we have some meetings set up tomorrow to talk to some of the property owners. This is not all public property. There is some private property involved, um, primarily the Charles, um, Mr. Hughes's property just to the north. Um, then we have some town property here with the firehouse and the gardens. Um, then we're into the old town cafe property, as well as uh, some impact here, the Webb Dean Stevens. So, um, we, you know, that those discussions, you know, aside from a layout, we also have to talk about, you know, agreements how we're gonna handle um, cross access, uh, cross parking agreements. So there's a lot to be worked out. We're at the very early stages of this development right now. 
and the town would be responsible for the handicap parking that would be required. Yes, we're showing some handicap parking in different spaces. Um, right now, we're showing a couple over here by the Charles. Um, we're showing three over here as close to Main Street as we can. Um, this, this, these orange colors would be new sidewalks. So we're putting a sidewalk connection to get people right out to Main Street. And then we have one on this plan for the firehouse and one up in the back for, um, for potentially for the community gardens. This would still connect to the existing uh, access road that goes back to the garden. We leave, uh, we leave that open so traffic can come in and out. Okay, and just my last question, how, uh, how much time do you have to spend the state funding? Um, at this time, I'm not aware of a restriction on, on timeline. Um, we, I, I think it was probably finalized uh, within the last six to nine months. So, you know, we want to get started on it. Um, you know, obviously there's a need, so we, we'd like to build it as soon as possible. Um, so having some additional funding out of ARPA would, would help us uh, achieve that. If, if you haven't been down there, uh, especially Halloween and Christmas and all that, oh my God. I was shocked when I came here. It is packed constantly. Uh, and the parking situation is getting worse and worse. And, you know, to the detriment of what we've been trying to achieve for 30 years. So, I mean, this is something that's really badly needed. There's times Keeney is just pa packed, completely packed. The streets are packed. And so uh, this is a definite uh, high priority to try to leave the, you know, keep the tourists coming and alleviate the parking situation. Yeah, here it makes sense. You know, I just wanted to say that, that uh, and I've talked, talked to Derek about this, as I looked at the amount of uh, the 2022-23 requests, okay, it's approximately $7 million. And basically that's, that, that's the same amount of money that we're gonna get from, from the federal government. So even though this may have a low priority, the way I see things here, you know, you, you know we should be able to, to support this uh, uh, you know, in its entirety. And, and all the other uh, you know, 50 projects Okay, that are listed. So, so like I said, even though it's, it's low on the list, uh, it's, it, it still can be accomplished along with the other 49 projects. So. This is just a um, construction in me speaking up. What's the plan um, since we are in winter months I see you putting a lot of shrubs around the, the perimeter on one side. And then you're protecting the firehouse, which you plan for snow removal, Derek. Is it you yeah, gonna we, go into the gardens in the back corner there? Um, right now they, they do plow uh, in a, from what I heard from Rich, in a, in a east-west direction, which is this way, because north is to the right. So we could talk about snow storage. I, I think the intent was they, they, this was designed so they can still plow right through the lot this way. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Well, you know, we're going to need some space for that for the fire department a lot as well. So like I said, this is just really a sketch at this point, you know, we're showing some, you know, clouded areas over here that could be some type of landscape or some type of screening. Maybe it's a fence, maybe it's arborvitae. You know, we, we'll come up with something as we go through the design, but um, yeah, s snow storage is going to just be something we'll, we'll accommodate. Okay, thanks. I just might chime in there. In in previous years, uh, there they when we have heavy accumulation of snow, they do haul snow out of the uh, firehouse parking lot. I don't know if Richie mentioned that to you or not, but <clears throat> he didn't. But that would be an option. With this build out as well yeah um for for hauling we usually only do it when we're in a dire situation there because it takes so much time and effort to haul out of there that anything that we can do to find space to to not have to haul um really is is paramount because it does take an extreme amount of time to haul out of there um, you know, obviously in a winter like the winter 2013, when it snowed 11 inches every week, we had no choice. Um, but if we can, Derek, as you said, capture some space for that, it would certainly be 
um, desirable. Any other questions? All right. Um, so with that, let me check the list here. So the next one on the list is uh, it's social services slash ADA curbing. Um, I don't know if uh, Kathy or Erica, one of you could speak to that project. And we can probably both give you a little bit of information on that. And if you're familiar with the driveway for the town hall on the Silestine side, uh, during COVID, we realized we couldn't have people coming into the building to uh, access our food bank. And so we actually set up where they could come through and come to that driveway, pull in, and we could bring uh, bags of food out to their car. And so we did that all through this process and realized it's actually a, an excellent way of getting the food out to our residents. And also they don't have to traipse through the town hall to take this material, take the food out of the building. And it's worked out to be a really good system. Well, in doing that over this, these past, um, what's I have to say years now, as opposed to months, that the driveway and the sidewalk have really taken a beating in terms of wear and tear and needs repair. And we also don't have a ramp that you could bring the shopping cart right out to the car and onto the driveway to be able to load uh, food for people or unload donations, because we also use that for the area to bring in both the small donations from residents and neighborhoods, and also the big donations that come by truck when we have big food drives. So this is just funds to help us make better access out there for residents and our shopping carts. Erica, did I miss anything? Nope, that covers it. Um, thank you uh, for having us tonight. I think it's just been really, um, it highlights how um, helpful it can be for especially the elderly and the disabled residents that we work with um, uh, all the time. So it really has been um, extremely helpful in that sense. Okay, <clears throat> so moving forward, you guys wanna, keep doing it the way you've been doing it through COVID, not going back to the old way you used to do it? Yeah, we really think this is a benefit all around. And it's, um, it's helped tremendously with not even having the traffic going through the town hall and the parking lot. Okay, makes sense. Anybody have any other questions? Thank you, ladies. Okay, uh, next on the list is the RFID replacement for the library, Brooke. Hi, um, the, you guys have been sent plans previously uh, for part of this. Um, and basically we're currently only utilizing half of the RFID capability. So that's the self-check system. There's a our, our self-checkout. Uh, we're not using check in. And so it would be really great. And so the plans that you've been presented as part of the CIP process in the past um, have shown, and I can show it tonight if we do a share screen, is basically, you know, and I've described this to most of this group is, is you could check in and it hits a conveyor belt, automatically checks in and drops into like five tubs like one for the children, it recognizes it's a children's book, it recognizes it's a DVD or a CD, and it goes into a different one. And instead of having staff involvement, at that point, you could actually just have, you know, where we have a library page, who's a minimum paid, paid work, minimum wage paid worker, grab those items and shelve them. Um, and so the patrons actually doing that work are check out system with the self checks. We have two machines um, I now account for 50% of our circulation. Um, when I started, Laurel, uh, the previous director had got it to in 2012, it was a CIP project 
like in 2011, 2012, it was quite some time ago, um, and funding was approved. And it was when I started in 2014, it was 38% of our circulation. It's now accounting for 50% of our circulation. Um, oh, yes, perfect. Thank you. Um, and I don't think we'll really increase that because there is where people don't like to use self-check machines and some who do. Um, but it's really nice to have a touchless safe option for that. Um, that equipment needs to be upgraded, but if we could have this added feature as well, it would be quite helpful on staff um, time and resources. I, and even with, you know, and I, I'm constantly adjusting my, my staffing levels as I try to recognize the technology is, you know, staff savings. So when I started, we were at 23 plus or so not 24 FTEs and now we're down to just over 20 FTEs and it's because as we slowly add in these me measures we we acknowledge the staff that we've either reallocated staff or we don't need to utilize them in that function anymore and, and or not utilize it so it is a savings with staff um and so that's you know great but you can see here on the device oh getting very fancy here um, Derek, <laughs> um, but you can just slide it in, it drops into the bins and it's, it's great. Um, I'm meeting with the vendor tomorrow to talk about if there's a leasing option for this. Um, I'm less of a fan of leasing, um, but I need to hear what he has to say. Um, and I know Glastonbury just recently installed with this particular vendor. Um, you know, and so I don't know if you guys have any more questions, but it would really be great to have the whole second half of this system in place. So. I just have one, Brooke, is Tom Mazzarella. Yep. Curious, I, I have literally no idea how, what the volume of books are being returned to the library. Could you give us an idea of like, I can't off the top of my head, but I can't, I'll get you those numbers, Tom, and provide that to you. I mean, this yeah. seems like a, a great system, but it also I would assume has a very high capacity. Uh, yeah, and this is actually, I think there may be some locations that have only three bins. Um, what was recommended by the vendor is five. Um, and I did visit my old location in New York. They have like 20 <laughs> in the main facility there. So I've seen it like in full-blown operation, a very jacked up version of this, which we don't need. Um, this I think would be sufficient for our needs um, because you know some books that are checked in automatically through the conveyor belt may need to go to another location and they get dropped into a separate bin and we just you know send it off. Um, yeah. And as staff are retiring or relocating, we are going to be, we have an office space that we can dedicate, because this is going to take up space, but we have an office space that we can repurpose the staff out of, or, or not repurpose, but give them different office areas to sit in. Um, and it's, you know, and, and it's, and I'm going to have some retirements coming up in the next year. So the timing on this might actually be really great um, as I don't have to dramatically relocate staff and just be part of a plan. Um, so what, what, what happens right now? Like, uh, you know, I see people going up to the door and dropping books in a slot that do you just let them accumulate. And then once you get a, a significant amount, you have some staff person go over there. and Yeah. So we check it every few hours and then they, that is pulled out. And then it's checked in and each piece is checked in individually. Um, but, you know, we're walking from one side of the building to the other. Um, it's checked in, you know, and that some of the, but it'd be nice if the staff could just load it onto a conveyor belt and it just takes care of it. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's quicker. It's quicker. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No, I just want to say that uh, anytime you can improve the process, uh, you know, you want to do that. And especially if you can, if you can save uh, FTEs, uh, uh, because FTEs don't, or, or uh, 
equipment, uh, you know, you know, you don't pay them pensions. And uh, so, no, I think, uh, you know, I, you know, you know, I think this is great. And uh, gee, I wish we had you in our manufacturing firm. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. Yeah. And Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm concerned about a leasing model because they lock you into these contracts and you don't necessarily, and they're trying to hard sell because the equipment I'm currently on, you know, is, is somewhat dated, the, the check out system, um, but we own it. And so that's, you know, that matters that we own it. And I'm not, you know, I am tied to a service that only they can come and repair it and whatnot, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I got to look around at other companies too. So this is our current provider. They used to be sole source. They're not necessarily sole source anymore. Uh, some libraries are sticking with them. Others go, I know Newington uses a different vendor. So. Hey Brooke, what kind of maintenance is involved? Uh, do the machines have to be uh, service calibrated? Um, you know, the, I would say that the um, the sortie machine is going to have to be calibrated and you have a maintenance contract, a yearly maintenance contract for that. Um, but the software itself, it's upgraded every couple of years and that, that's part of your, your service contract. Um, but the, I wouldn't say that the check, the self, the check out, has to be calibrated, the check-in, the feedback from the other libraries is they do have to be calibrated and there's a, you know, service guy who comes around and, you know, readjust. Is that, is there a manual that I, my, my tech librarian can end up doing it himself? That is something I'd be very curious to know. Um, and those are conversations I need to have with each individual vendor because they're no longer the only player in the game as they were in 2012. Um, and they're aware of that. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. So is the 200 all inclusive to get you started or you would have some additional costs? The 200 the equipment then you would have. Uh, the like two, said, it wouldn't be the ongoing, the 200 would be for like the, this, like equipment plus newer self check machines, but it wouldn't be for like the operating. That's part of my operating is the service contract if that, each year I would be paying that. Um, okay. But this would be for the actual software. I'm sorry. Is the software part of it as well? It, it Yes, but you pay a yearly service, but that's part of my operating budget and not okay. capital. Yeah, annual, annual license. Got it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Could you remind us the original install date of the checkout? My understanding, it was in 20... 12. Yeah, so we're you we're utilizing software from, you know, 10 years ago. I mean, it, it doesn't, you know, they have to tweak it, push down upgrades and whatnot. Um, you know, but it serves, this is like, there's not a lot of, there's generally, it's what I would call one function software. It does the same transaction for years, <laughs> you know, the same type of transaction just for a very long period of time. Um, and the RFID tags in the back, um, we're about to order, I think, six, six or I want to say, or 12,000 of them. And it's going to cost me a couple grand to order that from this company. Um, and that's what's put, that's the little RFD tag that you put in each individual book when you've processed it, that these machines can read all that. So there's a cost for those individual tags, you know. And are those tags um, proprietary towards each individual machine? Like are you have to um, everything if you go within a different company? Yeah, so uh, they used to be, and then it's kind of become more widespread because my tag has to be able to read at the Newington Library as well. And it works about half the time. And then otherwise they have to go up and use, you know, the barcode, the library has to use, utilize the barcode. So sometimes the other RFID tags work, sometimes they don't, you know, so, but there's, there's other, 
the the landscape has dramatically changed <clears throat> since 2012 with more vendors coming in and advances in the in the I would say in the RFID technology itself. And would you say three, four, five years from now it'll be drastically different as well, or <laughs> are we at a common ground now? I we're getting to a, co a more common ground now. I asked just in making the, the thought process of leasing versus buying outright. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> and I'm generally a fan of buying outright, but I really need to hear their sales pitch for lease, you know, so. Anybody have anything else? Thank you very much, Brooke. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, I guess um, I'm gonna move on to the old Academy roof design. That'd be Kathy. I think that's me. Oh, yeah. I think it's Sally. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kathy's going, yes, thank you, please. <laughs> um, the old academy, as you know, is, is a building utilized by the historical society. Um, currently, there's three parts um, on top of the roof. There's the chimney, the cupola, and the roof itself. Um, working with Tramco, the cupola has been closed to people going up in there for quite a number of years. Um, just because of the structural integrity of it, it really does need to be replaced. The chimney also needs a significant amount of pointing and rebuilding. Um, and what we want to do here with this, with this request is to um, meet with a structural engineer designer and actually get drawings to replace the roof, replace the cupola, and replace the chimney. Um, that would satisfy the building department. And also we would have a plan that we could then present to HDC when needed. Um, we would need a plan to be able to go out for pricing for all three parts of the project. And without the plan, um, we really won't know. Um, we need it for the building department. We need a stamp drawing. Um, it's services we don't have in house. And so we do have to go to outside vendors. Anybody have any questions on the old academy? Okay. I guess the next one is the building facilities assessment. Uh, right now, the um, we go through our buildings and we look at and prioritize projects, but there is no quantified overriding um, report that takes into account all mechanical, electrical, plumbing, um, building envelope, all of the systems, the sidewalks, the stairs, and really the complete condition of each of the buildings, taking into account any upgrades that have been done or any work that has been done. And so the one way that most municipalities and private industries utilize uh, information in order to plan for capital projects and maintenance is through having a building condition assessment. And that is something that we haven't had and something that we feel would prove um, beneficial because then it gives council and any committee kind of a roadmap as to, yes, things will pop up, but it would give a roadmap to be able to plan out capital projects, uh, you know, one, three, five, 10 years. It also gives the owners the opportunity to decide if they want to renovate a building or, or do renovations that would put the building back to the way that it was when it was built, or if they want to make improvements to certain things. And it is hard data um, that's put together usually by usually engineering companies. 
I've used this in other communities and it just really, I, for committees such as yourselves, it really makes a huge difference when you go to analyze it and prioritize. And uh, I don't think Weathersfield has ever done one of those, but um, it, it's a great tool for budgeting purposes. How often would things need to be reassessed if this kind of program was done? So we used to do it maybe every 10 years, eight to 10 years, something like that. Okay, so it's something it would be beneficial over a long period. A lot of times um, companies that do your reports give you ongoing um, ways of updating you know, all the reports are in the cloud, you can update it, you can see kind of where your progress is. They'll also give you forecasts as to how much you need to spend each year. And so you can kind of plan accordingly. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Well, it is new on the list and uh, I am curious, you know, why it hasn't been brought forth in the past. And um, and I don't recall seeing it as a high priority. So, um, I mean, what, what I, I'd like to hear from, from the town staff on that. Is it that, you know, it's something you'd like to have, but there was always a, another priority. It just... It, it was something that when I was first hired, I requested to have done and they are expensive to do. You're you know, you're looking at a, at least a hundred thousand dollar price tag. And that was felt to be in my experiences when I've asked for one, just too high a price to pay, knowing that um, the capital improvements committee was faced with only having 900,000 to maybe 1.2 in order to do things that um, it just, it, it withered on the vine because when you do these types of reports, one of the things you have to be ready for is knowing that you're going to know what you need to do in your buildings. And that can carry a pretty heavy price tag. And I pushed Sally, I said to her, put this on because I think it's just so important to have this done. I just think before there just wasn't enough uh, money, Chris. And, um, mm -hmm you've got this opportunity and maybe it's the only time you'll do it in 30 years, but boy, it at least would help you for a while. Well, yeah, it gives you a roadmap to work from. Set yeah, it's like, set you know, we do the roads, things. we do the roofs. Right. Why not do all the buildings too? Yeah. I, I remember Mike Turner had put something together years ago, but uh, this sounds more scientific and uh, efficient. Hmm. It also, gives, it also gives data when people ask, why did you do something versus something else? And we can point to, you know, um, the, that report based on, you know, the data that was given to be able to say, this is why we did this. It wasn't because I said I wanted to do it or it was someone else mm -hmm. thinking that it was important when someone else didn't, that it really does give you a roadmap if you choose to follow it. Yeah. Okay. Allie, does, does the report come prioritized? Like, do they, or they just give you a report here? This is what your issues are. No, the, the, last, the last time I did one of these, which was when I was working at Trinity College, um, we, we got, it was um, definitely, it was prioritized one to five um, with needs that needed to be done immediately. There was a prioritization for code and for um, code compliance for the state, and also how much per year you should be spending on doing the most critical things. And so it it really does give you a building by building full um, description of your current conditions and where you need to be and what needs to be replaced or what needs to be done in order to be at the place where they feel you should be. In that price tag of 100,000, that's, is that, it seems kind of low for what, what you're getting out of that 
report to me. Right. Uh, we'll put it out to bid. I mean, that's yeah. a lot of times, you know, what they come out around a hundred thousand or so. Um, it also, you have to evaluate the companies who are going to bid on it because there are many different companies. Some are architectural firms, some are engineering firms. So the group that is evaluating the bids for it need to really hone in on how the information, what kind of information you want and how that information will be used. And that will help to guide uh, where you go with it. Thanks. Will it include the schools as well or just town properties? Uh, again, that it, um, that's a that is a cost thing. I know that Mr. Emmett has already contracted with Colliers, and and I'll I'll let the town manager speak to that a little bit more um, when he was doing other other work toward his program. Okay, we just know with the high school, Sally, it would have helped us to have had information like this, and I think maybe that's why I'm. Uh, you know, really oh, 100%. Of this because of the assessments that we did have done and to see the analysis and the reports generated, but we were in the renovation then. So to have this beforehand, um, you know, would, would have been uh, great. So yeah. I remember Thank Christine, you. the renovations to town hall and the library, what a nightmare that was because we yeah, could yeah. never find the original plans and God, something like this would have been Right. Wonderful. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Well, and you're looking at the community center, right? And making investments there and analysis could, you know, who knows? They could say you need to move or you know what? You could hold off here or there, so. Or if you're gonna do the community center HVAC to save money, do the sprinkler, do this, do that. Well, you got the roof open, you know, so. Yeah, interesting. Well, Makes thanks for the, for the info. Anything else? Okay, um, town garage roof. Yeah, the next two are roofing projects. Um, the town garage roof, like many of our roofs, is, is made up of a number of roofs. We've been patching them for quite a while. Um, it is a pretty big footprint. And so um, it really is time for that roof to be replaced since that building, there, there are no plans for that building to go away. Uh, same thing with the um, ambulance building roof. We have pieced things together at the ambulance building. Um, that building is just too big for us to replace it kind of on our own. We would want to, we would, definitely want to bid out that project also. Could there be any kind of savings if the two roofs were done by the same company? At the same Again, time? you can, yeah, you can package it. Um, if, if the decision is made to move forward, we certainly would go out and as part of the bid process, ask for separate pricing and then pricing together. Okay. And I know the town garage is down in Old Weathersfield. Mm -hmm. Not an issue like the firehouse was with the roof where it had to meet the historical. No, the, the oh. roof on the the roof on the town garage isn't a cedar shake or anything, um, anything of um, historical significance. So we could do a like for like. Okay. There too. We still would need to go in front of HDC to present the project, but it would be as a replacement um, without changing it. Okay. Um, the next, should I just keep going down the list? The next one, yeah, um, the Keeney air handler and hot water. Um, up until about three years ago, the Keeney did all of their maintenance on their own. We really were not a part of that because they had gotten grants um, and other upkeep. Um, we are now 
responsible for it. Um, those systems have not been um, updated in a number of years. And the way that they were configured um, the right when the they right. were put in um, is challenging because it really doesn't make a lot of sense and we've been keeping them running, but um, they are going to need to be replaced. Right now they are functioning. I'm not gonna say that they're not, but we wanted to get it um, on the list and to get people thinking about it. Um, and then uh, same thing with the old academy, old academy and Keeney kind of go hand in hand. The air handler, their parts are no longer made, um, and we need to we need to replace it. Um, it has had some intermittent issues this year with heating, um, just because of its age and its functionality. It's it's just time um, for that to be replaced. Um, the library generator um, right now, the library does not have a generator. Um, it was, I don't know why, but it was, there was never one place in the library. I know that it is um, Brooks' desire to be able to, when there is a power outage, be able to provide services to the community, charging stations, warming stations, cooling stations, because it is a place that the um, community naturally gravitates toward. And so, Brooke, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add to that since it, I know it was a, a request that you wanted from the building side. And yeah, so when the electricity goes out on this half of the building, it's an immediate danger from my perspective. The windows, there's not as many windows on the library side and where they are, they're in non-public areas. And if it's nighttime, it's completely dark because the, even the skylights only don't do it unless the moon's out. <laughs> like there's not much light coming in. And so to me, it's an immediate hazard. Um, and people do gravitate to the library, um, you know, to come in. I know one time we didn't have to open up the community center with overtime because we were open on a Saturday. And for some reason, we actually did have electricity when other parts of the town had been knocked out and people did come in. Um, so it is, it is helpful in that way. Um, and, and so, and, I, and I've worked in other libraries <laughs> during hurricanes um, and people come, you know, and they can get work, they can connect to the internet, to, the, to a strong Wi-Fi. Um, it's a place for people to decompress with their kids. We are not overnight, obviously, um, but there's a lot of services that can be provided just with the library setting um, for people in times of an emergency. And it would be really nice if we had a generator, if we ourselves go down. Um, but I immediately am concerned. The first place I run to if the electricity goes out is to the elevator to make sure there's no one literally inside there because um, it won't go down to the bottom floor. It just stops wherever it is. So there isn't even an emergency in our elevator. Um, we'd have to add that in, but um, it's not part of our, our, our current elevator system to go down to the bottom floor. So I will say that there are, I, I would be remiss and, and the fire marshal would, would be very upset. There are, emer there are emergency lights so that if yes. the power goes out, we can safely get people out of the building. Yeah. I don't want their people to think that they would be completely in the dark and on the floor trying to crawl out of the building in the dark. So, <laughs> yeah. And we've checked on all of those. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But the elevator doesn't function, power's out to it. You know, it just, it doesn't, you know, in town hall, I can hear it kicking on when electricity goes out on my on, on both sides, it kicks on and it's a moment for them. For me, it's longer term, you know, and basically I'm, I'm closing shop when I may not need to, so. Okay, anybody have any questions? Thank you. 
Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I guess um, we can move on to Parks and Rec. Sure. Um, the next item up is basketball and tennis court resurfacing. And this dollar amount is to look at a lot of different, many of the courts throughout the town. Um, so we do have a list of those courts and the work that could be done on them. Most of them are for resurfacing, fixing, repairing. Uh, these recommendations came from the park board because they had a discussion about what was most used during COVID. What do we wanna look at to keep up? And I can tell you that the basketball and tennis courts during all that time, and even in regular time, the courts are always used and we're always getting funds from you each year to do a court or a basketball court and a tennis court. This would be to try and go in and do a lot of the courts all at once. And I can supply you with a list of those courts that we identified. Okay. Kathy, I have one question. Maybe I, I apologize in advance. I think I'm getting all my meetings mixed up, but didn't we, <laughs> didn't we talk about doing the four courts, four tennis courts at Mill Woods at $65,000? Is that? That's correct. When I was at your, the CIAC meeting last week, we talked about just the Mill Woods courts uh, for a request for, CI, for CIP. Right. We rolled the Mill Woods courts into this number. Okay. So it's not, it's not going to appear twice. On no, this. it's one or the other. Okay. Thank you. And then the, the next, anything else on the courts? The next item is um, the park board talked about some park upgrades and improvements for different projects around town. Again, they looked at what we um, what was used during um, during COVID again, and talked about all the playgrounds that we have throughout town, which I talked about at the last meeting also that I was asking for funds to begin to replace equipment at different playgrounds. And part of this number would be to look at a lot of the playgrounds and playscapes in town and those that were heavily used, which was pretty much most of them, and doing some improvements to them. One example would be Mikey's Place. If you drove by any time over the past couple of years, during the nice days, the place is packed. And we're looking at the possibility of replacing the surfacing there because we've been patching it, but it's really gotten worn. So that's one example of what this um, $404,000 would be. Uh, about 220,000 would go towards playscapes and looking at all the um, improvements and upgrades we could do to them. We also looked at the <laughs> Little League Classic Field, which has been on our capital improvement program request and it's been a, a big number of, um, well, it's 170,000. We already have 45,000. No, we already have 25,000. So we were asking for uh, 145,000 for that. And um, well, whatever, my math isn't great tonight, but, um, but that's on there. We're looking at all the ball fields were used, obviously. So we were looking at finally getting a project done and completed with a ball field. We just haven't been able to do that in a while. The board was also um, looking at, <clears throat> they've also been looking at the um, Keisha Farm project and have been looking at talking about doing some type of master planning for that project. So they looked at also for that, putting some money aside for Keisha Farms to at least have a plan and figure, then figure out a way to get funding in the future. So that was, um, that was what we were looking at for upgrading some of the park projects. And I also have that list and that uh, breakdown of costs. So we can certainly get you that if you'd like to see that breakdown. Okay. Yeah. I think that would be real helpful to uh, the group as well as the council, if you could, for those uh, 
the last two items the you know the uh the 440 and the 404 if you could break down um uh, each item so that you know say it decides to be get and get partially funded we could pick an amount that you could accomplish you know two or three of the projects yeah, and that, that exists. I actually uh, did send it to Derek just to have it on record, and yeah. we can certainly get that out to you. Thank you. The thing Kathy? was, um, when we were talking about ARPA funds, I said to Kathy, do me a favor, go to the Park and Rec Board and get me a full list of everything that's needed. So she came back with, or they came back with, I should say, over 800,000. So I decided to give her around half um, <laughs> because... It's the same thing as when I was here 12 years ago, everyone complains about these fields. They're the worst fields in the region. And if you can't build new ones and we can't afford that, then you better maintain what we have. And this would go a long ways to, towards getting that done. So blame me for bringing all this money. <laughs> Cause I said, Kathy, this has been going on for too long. Well, it was a fun exercise to pull all this together. I know. This whole thing has been fun for me because it's like lottery. Oh, I won, the, <laughs> I won $7 million. I get to play. <laughs> and the park board did try and look at what is most heavily used in town and where could they get the most buck for what, what could we do best to be able to take things off of the capital list? Okay. Hey, Kathy, where are we with putting lighting up there for the bocce courts? Um, you know, the the number of people playing is is increased and, you know, um, that's been an ongoing request. Yeah, and unfortunately, we did look at that as a new request as opposed to existing, but we are looking to get another cost estimate. We're hoping some of the um, some of the numbers that we had a year ago when it was the, the price skyrocketed, we're hoping that some of that has come down and we may have a better shot at doing that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Do you have any other questions? Okay. Uh, next item is listed as miscellaneous. I'm not sure who's covering that. The new, the oh, oh the voice, the voice system. Yep, Mike, Mike O'Neill is on the call. Who is? Mike O'Neill is on the call. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'll leave it to him. Although I know that Brooke and I are going to chime in here. Absolutely. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, this Thank item you. is a, a full replacement of the phone system uh, that serves town hall, police department and uh, all the outlying buildings, the firehouses, uh, community center, and uh, public works. Uh, we, have, we have talked about this project for quite some time, um, going back probably four years now, um, and it required some fairly significant upgrades of the network, because this would, this would be a you know, state-of-the-art voice over IP phone system, which would run over the town's network. Um, and the town's fiber network that connects our various locations. Um, so a, a, a network upgrade was required and then some, uh, some engineering and, and reconfiguration of kind of how we, how we uh, have designed our whole network. So that's something that has, has happened in past years. We got a bit sidetracked over the last two years with just a lack of uh, some staff turnover and, and uh, pandemic related demands. Um, but the RFP for this project is out. Uh, we issued it uh, a week ago, uh, or was last week, it was last Friday. And uh, so we're expecting proposals uh, later this month. And uh, well, let me just tell you a little bit, a bit about the existing system. This is, a, a, we're desperately in need of a new system. The system we have now, uh, the base components were implemented back in the mid '80s. There was an upgrade when the we uh, when we built the police department uh, headquarters back in 2002, and the software was end of life back in 2010, I believe. So this thing is is limping along. We have an arrangement with AT&T um, support uh, for that. 
um, we've been very lucky that uh, it's a it's a fragile system, and uh, we've been very lucky that we haven't had any big problems with it. But it lacks, you know, besides the age, it just lacks, uh, you know, the the modern day you know features of a phone system, and uh, you know, so this would be this would be to replace everything, including the handsets. Uh, we envision a, a premise-based system because of the public safety uh, needs. So we would not be looking at cloud-based. Um, we did specify that in the RFP, but we've already um, we've already gotten some questions from vendors about whether a cloud-based system would be uh, would be considered. I suspect when I hear questions like that that we'll probably get some proposals for cloud-based systems. We're going to look at everything. Um, but there is, it is important, what, the way that we would design the system would be to have a server running the system at town hall and a second redundant server at the police department, you know, connected by the fiber network. And that way, if there was ever an issue with one, we would well, uh, fault over to the other. Okay. Mike, Mike, was this, was this in last year's budget? It was in, it was out, back in? We put it in... Uh, Nothing has been funded to date. We put it in the request for uh, in the capital non-recurring expenditure fund. But if you recall, within when we make that request every year in the budget, we also specify how each of those items would be funded. Um, and typically, what we've done. So we, if we were to lease something, we would specify leasing. If there were grant grant money or the general fund, if it was going to come directly out of taxes. So what we did, we put it in there just to get it on the council's radar, but we, we showed it to be funded with lease financing. Right. So in effect, it's, it's just sort of been part of the plan, but not funded. And so this request would be for an outright purchase. You wouldn't be talking about the lease program. I think that, that's the opportunity that the, the ARPA funds presents to us here. That was to do that. And I guess this is not, I'm kind of bringing it up at the wrong time, but um, Brooks talked about the library uh, RFID system and whether it would be a lease or a purchase. If we were to lease it, then we, we couldn't use these funds. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, no, I, so a couple issues there. I was getting the sense when I heard Brooke talking about that, that it, maybe it was not a, was not lease financing, but maybe it was an operating lease. I don't know, like renting yeah. the system yeah. versus versus financing it with a lease. I don't know, but let's let's just say it's fine. If it's if it's financing, you're right, Tom. If this would be uh, that would be payments over some number of years versus you know using these funds. You know these funds are available. I should uh, I think till the end of twenty four, uh, maybe twenty five. Yeah. But again, yeah, you're right. This would. Didn't mean to put you on the spot on that one. I just was figuring that was a finance question. As long as you were on, I you got it. No problem. Yeah, question. Very important. Yeah. Um, just to just very quickly to lend support to this request, down to physical services. I have two assistant directors who no longer have <clears throat> phones at their desks because the lines can no longer support it. We don't have voicemail. We don't have the ability to forward calls. And this is just really needed. This is a absolute work tool that uh, IT I know has been trying to work through and, and the, they've been great trying to keep our system up and running it. Mike can talk to it. It's kind of an arm off of the main system, um, but it, we are just so desperately in need of, of this new system. I'd just like to chime in that, yes, and Mike has been very methodical in getting the network correct. I might not be using right terms, but get the the infrastructure in place. Is that correct, Mike? Yes. Yes, he's been very right. methodical about that. You it's been wonderful. And I, I, I'm not the hugest fan of shared services, but if I could jump on as a part of this project, I'm like, grabbing on with a life vest I like I just I want it so bad um and I know perhaps the library board has other priorities 
sometimes Brooke Berry's priority has been voice over IP for a very long time. It was, it's just a really, it's really, really important. And I'm not in as bad of shape as at the physical services, but we have hand sent hand, you know, they fall apart. <laughs> like it's just, and they haven't been under, I've received notification after notification that none of it is like supported anymore. <laughs> like none of the pieces are supported anymore. And so, um, if there is an opportunity to have this funded with any funding at all, please make it be so. Please, please, I'll quit talking yes. now. And just to be clear, the the library is included. What we've spec'd is is all town buildings, town wide. Yes. I don't and think I have to say anything. I think everyone has spoken. This is the same system that was bought when I was here, and I'm old, <laughs> so you know I, I think it's kind of like time to get a time to get a new one, folks. <laughs> and, and Mike, if I could just ask the Board of Ed buildings, they're already on their own phone system. Is that correct? They are. They're on a cloud-based system, Tom. So we don't have to worry about any. Um, dealings with those buildings, correct? No, we don't. I mean, there's a way for us, I think we'll, we'll do uh, five digit dialing at some point, you know, given, and again, this is just what these systems are, are capable of now, but we'll be able to do uh, five digit dialing to one of ed extensions rather than, you know, right now it's in an area code and exchange, you know, to call somebody at the board of ed. Well, we know where your priority is. <laughs> everybody's <laughs> yeah i think you would find that if you talk to anybody we would all tell you the same thing the phone system is critical i think it's really important important for us to talk to the residents of weathersfield but about half our phone calls are are you open <laughs> and it just if they could press one to hear our hours of operation would be great i know the rocky hill library recently in the past year or two got it installed, half their phone calls went away because they're answered with just push one, but you can still reach a human, which I think is really, really important mm -hmm. that there is a human at the end of the day. But I think so many calls come in that don't even, there's an answer at the end of button four and it's done, so. Ancient, like Munis. That's my financial system you're talking about, Chris. <laughs> want, to change that, want to change that over, Mike? No, sir. <laughs> Next week? I didn't say I like it, but I, I, I don't clearly say I don't want to convert to, to anything else. I don't think you do, you do either. <laughs> no, I've been on the councils that put these things in years ago, so now I'm feeling old seeing that what was new technology then. <laughs> Yeah, I was ready for the heap. <laughs> Anybody have anything else on the phone system? Uh, next one would be the matching funds for federal infrastructure grants. That would be me, I think. Uh, Derek and I were on a webinar uh, last, last week or the week before, and the federal infrastructure money is going to be coming in probably seven to eight months, and they're probably gonna be grant competitions um, in order to get the funding. And what all the speakers highly recommended is there is gonna be a local share for that money. So you better have it in your budget, set it aside now so that you uh, look prepared. You go in there and you say, look, we already budgeted, we have our local share and don't go scrambling. So I said to Derek, perfect timing, put it on the list. So I don't know what number to pick. So I picked 250,000. Don't, we don't know what percentage they're gonna be looking at. It could be every grant's different, but at least it's something. Okay, the 250 is a comfortable number for you. You wouldn't want more than that? I don't know. Well, this is this is town funding. This is not grant money, so. Right, this would be the local match. Yeah. So if so we were awarded a million dollar project, 
they might say we want the local matches 5%. I don't know. I have no clue. That's the thing. We don't know. Right. But if this is 250000 out of the 900000 that we have to spend. So. Yeah. So that that's you know we're being asked to take that off of the nine hundred and set that aside. Well, I mean, you could use ARPA money too for that. This is federal money that's coming in that you need the share for. Yeah, yeah, but you can't use federal money for match. I don't this know. I would double check on that because. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's something about ARPA funding that's allowing it to be used a little more creatively, but we'll check. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you typically can cannot use federal funds as matching for other federal awards. And I mean, can't, can't use federal grant money. And this is this money is not the ARPA money is not being treated as a grant. Right. That's what Ken Slater, our town attorney, had said to me, but I want to double check, Christine. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, you have to answer for it at the end of the day. So, yep. We're going to check guidance. with the experts <clears throat> from the state. Okay. Uh, next one, BD. Audio visual for the council chambers. Item is a uh, $125,000 item for uh, replacement and upgrade of the, the video system in the council chambers. Um, the current system is, um, I will not say it's as bad by any means as the phone system, but it is a bit of a hodgepodge. Um, it is, uh, and, and I'm speaking of the back room and sort of the production equipment because just, just because things have changed over the years, we do streaming on YouTube now, in addition to local access cable. Um, and so pieces have just been kind of added on over the years rather than, a, you know, and it's, and it's really in need of a, a bit of a top to bottom um, uh, upgrade there. And we've, we've noticed this more so with the virtual meetings, um, and we're, you know, we're just not set up for that. And it's gotten to the point where running a meeting requires, you know, typically requires someone with quite a bit of IT savvy, if not um, one of the members of the IT staff, you know, so, you know, this is something that in the past had been done by a part-time, um, a part-time employee who would come in in the evenings to, to produce the uh, council and board of ed meetings. So, um, it would present savings there. I can tell you um, if you've ever watched uh, a meeting streamed over YouTube, it's all standard definition. Um, this would this would upgrade all the equipment to high def, um, which makes quite a bit of difference. And I can tell you, you know, just looking at my Zoom grid now, um, if you, you were to watch this on YouTube, you can't read the names. And a lot of times you can't recognize the faces of the the members in the meeting. So this this would take care of all of that. It includes a projector and projector in the in the room. Um, with obviously, you know, current features. Okay. Um, did you say one hundred twenty five thousand dollar project? The line item says two twenty. Yeah, the 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 quote had uh, three scenarios on it, um, and that was just that that was the sum of all three. But it's a each one was included. The items in the in the other scenario, so that the one hundred twenty five thousand is is the full upgrade. Um, so that was just a, it was just a clerical error. It should be one hundred twenty five. Okay, that reduces that number. All right, and then I guess our last item would be the social services food bank. Is Kathy or Erica still here? Uh, Kathy's muted. Oh, sorry about that. <clears throat> and I thought I saw Erica. But this shelving is... Yeah, I'm here, Kathy, just in case. <laughs> the this, this shelving is for um, to have better storage in our current space that we have here at Town Hall. 
we were fortunate and continue to be fortunate to receive a lot of donations from <clears throat> residents in a variety of groups and organizations. And <clears throat> we literally ran out of space and had to put tables up in the hallway because of the amount of food that came in. And these, the shelving a while ago, we had a design done by an engineer who looked at our spaces and mapped it all out for us, <clears throat> including the Sally port where we keep all our, our canned goods. So it would just be a big help to be able to get better organized. Erica, if you wanna to add to that. Um, no, I think that that um, covers everything. We really are just um, running out of space. We're, we're kind of utilizing every part of the downstairs, I feel like at this point, especially with um, thankfully additional food programs that we're able to run um, from our hunger action team that's in town right now. So they've been really um, helpful in getting donations in and they're coming in consistently. So we're really um, appreciative of that. And also it helps how we store the food because a lot of times um, items cannot be on the floor. They have to be up on pallets. So we're piecing things together in case we get, we, and you know, we wanna fall into line in case we get inspected um, because we, all, we are talking about food products. Anybody have any questions? Okay, I want to thank all the department heads for coming out and going over the projects with us tonight. Um, there was a lot of useful information. Um, Mr. Chairman, before we uh, let them go, if they want to leave, uh, I just want to ask if, if anybody, uh, any, of the, any of the members had any questions on um, some of the funding uh, requests. I know there was a it was mentioned last week, are any of these projects, uh, would it be an option to, you know, fund them with half or less? Can, you know, can they still be done or started with less funding? So if there's, if there's any of those questions that you want to ask while they're here, um, please do. Otherwise, if uh, not, then I can follow up with them at another time. Well, like the old Weathersfield Park and that there, you'd want full funding for that, right? Is that something you could work with part of it now and the rest of it later? Yeah, with with our projects, we lumped some of the some of our capital projects together in some of those things, which I will get you that list. But you can certainly anything we can get would be appreciated and you could certainly look at that and look at the priorities. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask Sally about the um, the replacement roofs at um, the schools. I know you sent us the, the backup information. Um, actually, maybe a question for, for Bonnie. Um, uh, when the the estimated time frame for um, for making renovations, uh, you know the the board of ed's plan. Just you know, in terms of being able to make a decision about whether to make those replacements or you know if we're going to be looking at renovations. So I just wanted to come back um, to that. You mean when are they going to decide what's going to go on the ballot? We were we were talking about um, some of the repairs that are needed at the schools, and um, I think there was a comment made about you know, uh, you know, a number of years from now of, of oh. action. Yeah, I asked Michael about that, Mike Emmett, and he said it'd be ten years. If things were passed in the, in November, it would be ten years before everything is complete. Okay, so I mean, so the, the replacement of the roofs is something we definitely need to be yeah. looking at. Sally had the right amount, I had the wrong amount. But yep, Mike said it'd be 10 years before um, they wouldn't be needed, so. Okay. Okay, that was something I had hanging out there still, okay. Okay. 
Um, did we did we talk about the police station, the the generator? I know we had some discussion, but did we have someone present to us? On yeah, uh, Sally did. What happened was the generator um, kind of went kaput one day as they were checking it, and then they realized that this thing is on its last legs. In fact, I was going to make a comment looking at the initial priorities that that scares the hell out of me. If that generator ever goes, we are in big trouble. <clears throat> it's like, I have so many number ones, but I really feel yeah. that one's got to get moved up. We wouldn't have dispatch. We would have a major, major nightmare on our hands. Okay. So um, that is a big need. And Sally, and I don't know if you want to comment, but it's, it's on its last legs. It's definitely on its last legs. Um, and on the, we do have it running. We are maintaining it. We are um, understanding now the scope of the issues internally that are we having problems with. Um, on, a, on a better note, um, speaking with our electricians and our building department, um, we could do a like for like switch because the size of it, the kilowatt size of it is actually um, good for the building, even with all of the things that they have added to it over the past few years. So that makes it easier for us to go out. And I spoke with Mike earlier today about getting information together to go out for an RFP um, on, on its replacement. Okay. But it is a very long lead item. Um, so the sooner we get a thumbs up, thumbs down as to whether or not you wanna pursue it, um, certainly is the better because they are taking a number, a series of months to get built and then delivered. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any other questions for anybody? I think we got a lot of information to digest tonight. I know it changes some of my rankings. Okay, if nobody has anything else right now, um, like I said, I'd like to thank the department heads for coming out and supplying us with all the information. Um, it's been very helpful. Um, I know normally at this time, what we would usually start to do is go through our list and discuss it. Um, and committee members would like to do that. Um, you guys can, I've got a personal commitment I got to go for. If you guys want to keep going with the meeting and start that process, I can turn it over to Christine and let her keep going. Or if you guys want to kind of digest everything tonight and pick it up next week, we can go that route. Yeah, I vote to pick it up next week. Okay. I second that. Okay. We got a, we got a couple of things we have to look through. A couple of my priorities might change here after hearing some of this. Um, but yeah, I say we digest it and uh, move on next week. Okay. Um, I would we... recommend then um, if you want to redo your list, just resend it to me. Um, otherwise, what I'll do after the meeting or this week, I'll send you where we were with the tallies because I scored all the projects and came up with a priority list as a, as a group. Um, so I'll send you that just so you can see where people were understanding that, you know, some of the priorities may change for individuals and that may change where they end up on the list, but I'll send you that for information. Um, the other thing I just wanted to point out, similar to the AV system, um, the cost of the Millwoods um, fluorine filtration, uh, pool filtration tanks, has gone down from 160,000 to 140,000. Um, so I'll make note of that in the information that I send you. So both those projects were the requests were reduced. Um, and could I just be before we adjourn, um, just I, I want to clarify um, the dollar amount that may be available. Again, we're making a recommendation. Um, uh, the the council will make final decision. 
Um, but am I correct that the town is looking to use these funds for other needs as well that we're competing with? Um, and I don't need to use that term when I talk about public health and, and mental health um, programming uh, that uh, the residents uh, need. But, um, uh, you know, are we looking at sharing these dollars with, with other needs that, uh, you know, we, we may not, the town may not be able to do everything that's on this list? Um, the answer is yes. There's another group, in fact, Tom's a part of that group too, that's looking at non-capital items. Uh, that have been re requested. But I think as Tom said at the last meeting, and I think it makes a lot of sense, don't even worry about the, and I know this is the only year we're gonna say this to you. Don't even worry about the money. <laughs> Just do a priority list and then um, it'll be up to the council to decide how to divvy up that money. And it may be a case too, where they don't divvy it up all at once because they don't have to allocate till uh, um, 24, so. I mean, it's really what's important as a group that you feel needs to get done in what order. But at the I same think. time, we do have 900,000 available to us to continue to apply to the projects, the, the work that still has to go on today, tomorrow. Right, but I would think when you're prioritizing in the back of your head, whatever's on the top of your list, they would kind of put towards the 900, you know what I'm saying? So Bonnie, if I could add to that one one thing, Bonnie. Oh well, yeah, Tom, go ahead. Once the group has had a chance to uh, resort their their numbers, I think it might be helpful if we were to let them know which. And I'm thinking mainly of the uh, ARPA related uh, air quality type items. Yeah. We could tell them like say. Uh, say some of these uh, HVAC units are at the top of the list as priorities, we could tell them, look, we've got, you know, a million three covered of the air quality stuff. Uh, I think those were the capital and the citizens alert system. I don't know if that's a capital item, but take those items out. So that would shift their other uh, items and then they can still give us their their nine hundred thousand dollar list at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could bring that to the next meeting too. Uh, it'd be helpful for them to see that you know, like community center HVAC. That's five hundred thousand dollars. That's 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 half of their you know, half of their right. list. Right there. We could tell them, look, you don't have to concern yourself with that one. That one's out. Yeah, because that's on the uh, our, the COVID money. That's right. on that list. I have. Because I think it's it's that, mainly all HVAC. Yeah, that money. Uh, you know, our hands are tied of what we can use it for, so we should right. certainly try to take advantage and uh, use that money towards all the air systems. And you got the uh, Keeney Town Hall Police Department. Uh, you know. Oh, yeah, yes. I'll um I'll work with Derek to put it in a format that's easy and try to get it to you ahead of time. I mean, for sure. me, drainage and maintaining our contract with Tremco for for the roofs. I mean, Sally Sally has taught me the importance of the roofs. <laughs> so those are always at the top of the list for me, and you're going to need them annually. But you know, then there's the logistics, the staging of all of this, right? You're not gonna be putting HVAC units on every building all at the same time, you know, that's, so I try to consider that in, in my ranking in terms of, you know, what can get done, what needs to get well, done. Yeah, and we've talked about this because the staff can only do so much, even if you hired a company to kind of oversee that staff's got to watch that company and you know they only have so much time also but then you have the supply demand all of a sudden we're all going to be looking for hvac units you know and not just in connecticut all over the country so can you imagine how, how long it could take to get these things yeah, you know and, and uh, the labels installed so 
Okay, well, our chairman has to get to an appointment, but um, um, it's been I'm helpful. Just, okay, so everybody kind of yeah, reworks your list and get them back to Derek. And um, we can readjust the priorities. My understanding was we were just working on one full list and we weren't separating, separating out a $900,000 list. Um, but if that's the route we're gonna go, I'm fine with it. Um, you can let us know how you want us to handle it, Bonnie, if you wanna separate okay. this with a 900,000. Um, yeah, I was just saying for me, that was the logic I used when I was putting my list together. I, mean, I was thinking some of the stuff that was on the um, capital list and the art list combined, if I took some of them out, yep. a lot of the capital projects can be completed with the capital money, but I'm not sure how the council wants to handle it. Right. Okay. Um, do we have any old business? No. Okay. Then can I get a motion for adjournment with our next meetings being scheduled for next week? The ninth at 5 p.m. via Zoom. So moved. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, and we'll talk to everybody next week. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. All right. Good night.